A ranger slides to the safety of a fallen pillar, barely avoiding the arrows that ricochet off the weathered marble. Bracing behind a stone obelisk, a warlock questions their life choices as the dragon's fiery breath tears through the air either side of them, and the bard creeps beneath the lip of an overhang, quiet so as to not to alert the beast prowling the area above it. Taking and using cover is a crucial part of any long-ranged engagement, and can be a lifesaver when trying to advance on an enemy who holds an advantageous position. So how exactly are you supposed to determine what constitutes as cover, and what benefits does it provide? Quick answer, anything large enough can be considered cover, including creatures, and multiple sources of cover do not stack or combine to make more cover. Cover is calculated by how much of a creature's space is unobstructed from a source of damage. Half their space, or at least two corners for half cover, and one quarter of their space, or at least one corner for three quarters cover. A creature of any size always provides half cover. If none or all corners of a creature's space are visible, but some of the creature's space is or isn't obstructed, the DM decides its level of cover based on the environment. Half cover grants a plus two bonus to deck saves and AC, while three quarters cover grants plus five. Total cover means complete immunity to any effect originating from the other side of the obstruction. Having total cover usually heavily obscures you, but being heavily obscured typically does not grant any cover. There is no relation between light obscurement and half or three quarters cover. Some effects provide cover unconditionally, and some ignore cover unconditionally. At the DM's discretion, a creature or object serving as cover for an attack that misses its target may be struck by the missed attack, should the attack's total be high enough to hit the cover's AC, and if the attack would have hit the original target if not for the cover bonus. Alright, so that's a lot to take in. To better understand why all that works the way it does, let's go over the sections available to us to describe how to use cover. The first place we should look is the base rules for cover on page 196 of the player's handbook. Cover. Walls, trees, creatures, and other obstacles can provide cover during combat, making a target more difficult to harm. A target can benefit from cover only when an attack or other effect originates from the opposite side of the cover. There are three degrees of cover. If a target is behind multiple sources of cover, only the most protective degree of cover applies, the degrees aren't added together. For example, if a target is behind a creature that gives half cover, and a tree trunk that gives three quarters cover, the target has three quarters cover. Half cover. A target with half cover has a plus two bonus to AC and dexterity saving throws. A target has half cover if an obstacle blocks at least half of its body. The obstacle might be a low wall, a large piece of furniture, a narrow tree trunk, or a creature, whether that creature is an enemy or a friend. Three quarters cover. A target with three quarters cover has a plus five bonus to AC and dexterity saving throws. A target has three quarters cover if about three quarters of it is covered by an obstacle. The obstacle might be a portacullis, an arrow slit, or a thick tree trunk. Total cover. A target with total cover can't be targeted directly by an attack or a spell, although some spells can reach a target by including it in an area of effect. A target has total cover if it is completely concealed by an obstacle. So essentially what that means, as presented, cover is mostly dictated by the DM in any given case. However, if you want some more hard and fast rules for cover, the Dungeon Master's Guide has some useful elaborations on page 251. Cover. To determine whether a target has cover against an attack or other effect on a grid, choose a corner of the attacker's space or the point of origin for an area of effect. Then. Trace imaginary lines from that corner to every corner of any one square that the target occupies. If one or two of those lines are blocked by an obstacle, including another creature, the target has half cover. If three or four of those lines are blocked but the attack can still reach the target, such as when the target is behind an arrow slit, the target has three quarters cover. On hexes, use the same procedure as a grid, drawing lines between the corners of the hexagons. The target has half cover if up to three lines are blocked by an obstacle, and three quarters cover if four or more lines are blocked but the attack can still reach the target. So that's a good way to know for sure whether or not a creature has cover, but there is also an optional rule later in the DMG on page 272 for how to deal with a creature serving as cover being hit by a stray attack. Hitting cover. When a ranged attack misses a target that has cover, you can use this optional rule to determine whether the cover was struck by the attack. First, determine whether the attack roll would have hit the protected target without the cover. If the attack roll falls within a range low enough to miss the target but high enough to strike the target if there had been no cover, the object used for cover is struck. If a creature is providing cover for the missed creature and the attack roll exceeds the AC of the covering creature, the covering creature is hit. 
Essentially what that says is, a creature acting as cover for an attack has a 10 or 25% chance for the attack to hit them instead, provided the original attack beats their AC. I say 10 or 25% because 2 or 5 of the possible outcomes of the 20 sided die rolled for the attack correlate to the cover being struck. These rules are pretty definitive once you put them all together, but one thing we can talk about is how certain spells and effects use cover. There are some spells like Bigby's Hand that specifically provide unconditional cover to a target, as well as some other abilities like the Spell Sniper feat that ignore certain types of cover. I plan to talk about this more in my next video, where I will discuss areas of effect, so you'll see a card for that now if you're watching from the future. But as a general rule of thumb, if an effect does not explicitly say it ignores cover, it doesn't ignore cover at all. The last thing I want to talk about for this video is how to calculate cover when operating in three dimensions. Sometimes, a flying character may have a means of receiving cover from the environment, or even just a creature on higher ground than an attacker or origin point. The rules given to us in the Dungeon Master's Guide only account for a two-dimensional battlefield, so it's typically left to the DM to figure out how cover works three-dimensionally. The best way that I myself have found to handle these situations is to take the same approach we were given for two dimensions, but applying it to all eight corners of a creature's space as a cube, instead of the four corners at the bottom of their space as a square. When operating in three dimensions, a creature has half cover when between one and four of the corners of its space are obstructed. And then, three quarters cover kicks in when five or more of the corners are blocked by cover. A total cover of course being when all corners of the creature's space are obstructed and no reasonable means of striking them is present. It goes without saying that my three-dimensional method is clearly more complicated than the two-dimensional method, as we typically don't have accurate side views for our maps. But for the most part, in order to keep the game moving smoothly, it's best to just listen to the DM and let them make a call in regards to what kinds of cover a creature has, and you can always pick it up with them again at the end of the session if you remain unconvinced of their ruling. And that's about really all I had for this video I'm afraid. Been doing shorter videos lately as I've got a bit of a bigger project in the works and my area is coming out of lockdown at the moment so I'm juggling reintegrating into work and society and maintaining my hobbies and all that. But beyond that, hit up the comment section with any interesting ways you determine cover in your own games. Thanks a bunch for watching, hope you have a great day, and may the dice be ever in your favour.